Kia ora team, my name is Mr. Dama and today I'm going to talk to you about reverse chain rule. So let's quickly have a look at an integration question we know how to do. If we use the bracket rule, we add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and since there's no derivative of the inside, we just plus c. And that's quite comfortable. Then we stepped it up a bit and we got questions like this where we once again add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and then divide by the derivative of the inside, plus c. And so these were fine, right? And yes, this will apply for trig questions too. But what happens to questions that look like this? And the answer is, we can't integrate these. However, if you change them up a little bit, they become quite integrable. So this question is quite hard to integrate. However, this question is not hard to integrate. If we expand, it's possible to do, but there's another thing. What I want us to do is I want us to look at the inside function. All right? And I want you to think about the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of x squared plus 7? The answer is 2x. And so since the derivative of the inside is on the outside, we can do something quite exciting. Okay? So when the derivative of the inside is on the outside, we can just focus on this part. We can add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, and then divide by the derivative of the inside. Notice that this part and this part cancel, plus c. And so in fact, I lied in a video before that said you can only integrate if there's a linear function on the inside. You can do this reverse chain rule if the inside has its derivative on the outside. And let's use functional notation to write this. We get g dash of x f of g of x dx and the integral is just the integral of f of g of x plus c which is quite nice in the sense that this g dash at the front doesn't matter because it cancels off so let's have another look using this rule Since the derivative of the inside is on the outside, I just integrate this plus c. And the 2x on the front and the 2x on the bottom, they will cancel. So let's try something like this. So the inside function is sine x, but the derivative of the inside is on the outside. So it's just cosine x sine x to the power of 3 divided by the new power and the derivative of the inside. Cancel, cancel, plus c. And so your integral is sine cubed over 3 plus c which is quite nice and now you've got another way of doing funkier functions so let's try another one what if I had the integral of 6 squared let's go 2 6 squared 2x times tan 2x to the power of 5 well the derivative of tan 2x is 2 6 squared 2x so I can just write 2 6 squared 2x times tan to the power of 6 over 6 divided by 2 6 squared 2x. That cancels, that cancels, plus c. And that is quite friendly, and that's quite nice. And this is reverse chain rule. Often is the case, you will need to do stranger things. So let's have a look at this question here.
So the derivative of the inside is 4x. I don't have 4x on the outside though. But just like before, I can multiply this by 4 and divide by 4. So now I can go ahead and do the integration. 1 over 4, okay, then the integral is 4x, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, divide by the derivative of the inside, the 4x and the 4x cancel, plus c. And that's how you do these questions. This is called reverse chain rule. Now, I want you to take this away, and if you ever see the derivative of a function on the outside of a function, then you can proceed to do reverse chain rule. And this works quite well in trig questions, when you've got something like cosine 2x times sine 2x. You could use compound angle, but here... The derivative of sine is cosine times 2. So we need to multiply by 2, we divide by 2 as well. And so when we integrate, you write 2 cosine 2x sine. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, divide by the derivative of the inside. Cancel, cancel plus c. If you've got the derivative of something on the outside, you can make it very, very doable. And that's how it works in integration.